Ready? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> oh. Yes. Yes? Yeah. I don't know how you would collect that without Slurp. getting a bit of the sponge, too. Oh, yeah. I think you'd have to get the sponge, yeah? You, I don't know if we would want to sample this whole organism or just a piece of it, or how uh, we want to go about that. Snip and slurp, maybe? Maybe, a, yeah, grab yeah. and slurp. Okay, keep going wide. Oh, Dave, I'm going to just set down so we can do a sample. My God, you guys are so messy. <laughs> <laughs> I went to go put a box away in the shop, and like two oranges rolled out of nowhere. <laughs> Practicality tree. <laughs> Practical. <laughs> Ernie, can you hit this stick lock? Yeah, time is a factor. I can try to, um, I you just don't know where it'll settle. You want a full rack back there, Jake? Yeah. Benthic Tina 4. A Tina 4. You can definitely imagine there's not many of these collected because. Look a little down. It's oh, kind of hard Sorry. to find. Thank you. Ask it to pick up one of those nodules on the way. Keep an eye on <laughs> yeah. Argus there, please. Yeah. Let's get the jar screen up. Yeah, you're going to put the jars on, on the monitor there, please? Where's the cameras? Oh, I'm alright. Right, right. Yeah. Nice. And then... Flush it. Yeah, let's just actually just go to the other. We were flushing it pretty well yep. before. Yeah, we're we're aware that there's rocks in it. Yeah. <laughs> Nodules. Yeah. Whatever. So which one are we going for? Number four is all right with you guys? Four is fine, yeah. Great. Go ahead and push that in there a bit, please. Dave? I might have to come up, so I'll have to do this pretty fast. It'll be okay. Come on, come on. I'll, I'll watch it. We can get w way closer than we've been getting, so it'll be all right. Roger, do you want to look a little up there, Jake? Is this, um, are the nodules in there going to be an issue? Jake, you want to look up on the pan and tilt? Hopefully it'll go past them. We could always clip and put it in a forward bio log. Just, yeah, as mm -hmm. long as we try to get ahead, a piece Jake. and not like the whole thing. Go ahead and turn on the slurp there. Thirty percent. Go ahead and do fifty. Fifty. That's good. Oh, stop. Zero, 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 zero. See if it uh took the piece on we wanted. Oh, nope, still oh. on there. I'll do thirty. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and reduce it to ten. Oh. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and go on again. 30%. Come on. Yeah, it's pretty stuck on there. There you go. There you go. Got it. It's in the hose. Full wide there, please. All right, Jake, go ahead and fly ahead. All right. Yeah, we're still fine because we're stationary. It's not so bad. I'm not seeing anything moving in there. Yeah. Gonna increase the. No, I can do. It. Okay. Getting battered by manganese nodules right now. <laughs> <laughs> rock tumbler. Poor thing. Or an inverse rock tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> The rocks tumble you. Renny, did you have a rock tumbler when you were a kid? I wanted one, but I did not have one. I did I still too. still think about that. You 
I just got rocks. Now? Just rocks and nothing to tumble them with. This entire hmm. career has been built upon that lack of rock tumbler. I had a rock tumbler and then I set up a, a stand outside my house to sell these polished really? rocks. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you sell? Oh yeah, they sold. <laughs> That's how he got where he is today. Awesome. <laughs> sold them for Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you happen to note the depth uh, at that site, Sarah? Uh, no, I didn't. We're at 2312 now, so maybe it was like five meters down. Yeah. It's recorded in the metadata, but I like to put it in here, too. Uh, Raj. And what was the sample number on that? So it's going to be 041 if it makes it into the jar. Yeah. Maybe it's in the hose and we'll get it, but hopefully it comes in the jar. Just see just what we're at here. I'm going to zero it real quick. Yeah. I suspect that some of the hose maneuver, maneuvering will shimmy it up. Yeah. Exercise it again. Exercise the hose, Raj. You want to look a little down? If we can see it in the pipe there. I'm going to turn my mic off. <laughs> Let's see the nodule. I don't see it in the pipe, though. No, I think it might have gotten past that. Maybe it's hung up further up. Mm -hmm. We don't know is if there's more nodules up, caught up higher. You're not seeing any good flow. It's not still on the end, is it? No, I think it's, no. I saw it go in the tube at least. And given that that manganese nodule is hovering, it's at least getting some flow. And I think my my guess is it's at the top of the hose, and there's some nodules up there. No way of knowing, though. Yeah. I think we stopped drifting, by the way, so you can, we don't have too much more forward to go. I don't see any white bits in the... the tube there. I think you might get that manganese nodule though. I saw it go up to the top. Yeah. Come on. I don't see any more movement there, are you? Mm. No. Yep. Do you typically if if we have we if we believe that there's samples stuck in the hose, would we be able to check that on deck? That way we can still log it as a sample and actually not sure what the protocol calls for um whether or not i log this as a sample and then log it lost later yeah i would do that um, that's my guess if steve doesn't respond to me in a couple minutes all right we'll give it one more minute and then we'll just stow it and okay call it in the hose i would do that because it's like still we believe it's on the vehicle and yeah okay it's easier than the other way around trying to figure out timestamp of a sample and all that stuff. Yeah. I 
All right, well, we'll say it's a hose bucket sample. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You want to keep moving up slope? Yep. Take you on the zero section. Thank you. So we've had a bridge now. Uh, one step, 100 meters, 140. And do you want to hold at the next, um, into the next ship move to collect a rock? Yeah. It'll be at around 2200. Yeah, I'm not sure if it will. It depends what the slope does here. But Yeah, uh, I think it'll just be 20 or so meters, 30 meters maybe. Oh. Yeah, you're right. So we had a question about the samples. Uh, they're taken under high pressure, and do they stay the way they were once they are brought up to the surface? Um, largely, yes. Um, the ones that are least likely to make it up intact are the sea cucumbers, but we had some really good luck um, on recovery last dive, um, getting them intact. They were beautiful when we pulled them out. Um, but yeah. The pressure change doesn't affect them um, as much as I would have thought. Temperature does. Some of the corals will change color and um, start to become necrotic really, really quickly. Um, within minutes. Wow. Of the surface. This, uh, this move was 140, and uh, the next one will be 160. Reg, 160. Like to remind our viewers, you are welcome to send messages, or questions in on the chat.
Hype train. Hmm. Where's the hype? <laughs> <laughs> Pulled off on a siding, I think. Hype train pulled off on a siding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ROV question. Sound good? We have a question from a viewer. They want to know if you could talk about the electronics for Herc and Argus. Are they filled with, is there mineral oil to mitigate the pressure? Yeah, there's a number of um, uh, junction boxes that we have that are filled with oil. Um, and that allows us to access a lot of our electronics and uh, wiring for a number of different components. Um, and uh, yeah, the oil allows us to um, uh, not have to use like uh, one atmospheric housing housings for uh, a lot of our electronics because oil doesn't compress like air does. It does compress, but only to an extent. So we have other reservoirs to compensate for um, those um, oil volumes. And uh, I think oil only compresses to about 15% right, of its volume in uh, in air. Yep. Seems some sort of blockage. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's a, that's a lot of sediment there. Has an associate on it too, right? Okay, yeah. hold on, I'm going to my sponge page to see, like, a kind of a brownish purple. I'll probably find out tomorrow that you can't use color at all to identify <laughs> this. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's a lot of sediment, though. Yeah. Mary made of the seafloor. All right, full wide, please. Follow up to the question about the junction box. Is that what we are seeing on the side of Herc when it comes out of the water? Yes. Yeah, it's like a rectangular looking um, box with a clear um, face to it. And uh, yeah, in, in that you can see it's like a mineral oil, yellowish type um, volume of liquid. And uh, same things on Argus. There's actually we have a port side and a starboard side junction box on Argus. How much buoyancy does it add to the vehicle? I'm not sure off the top of my head. I would say probably none. <laughs> you know, the first, like those uh, original submersibles, the Trieste with the giant reservoirs above them, filled with diesel fuel. Mm. Diesel fuel. Because it's, it's buoyant but incompressible, but it's not very buoyant, so you need like a massive amount of it to lift up a steel or titanium ball. Hmm. Interesting. We have a viewer from Denmark who wants to know how high is the summit of the seamount? The summit of this seamount's around 1,800 meters below the sea surface. Can I push on in a bit, please, Dave? What I want to know from the That's viewer in Denmark sure. is, what's a traditional Christmas dinner? <laughs> 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 All right. This looks like a type of Let us know. Chrysogorgia. Yeah. Chrysogorgia. Yeah, I think so. We collected some things. This are very similar last expedition. Mm. That's gorgeous. Reminds me of like cherry blossoms. You know? yeah. Oh yeah. Or Christmas dinner in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that same spiral axis though. You want to come a little wide there, please? No, this one doesn't have. It's not a red Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking of a different one. 
branching patterns are. Which are randomized. Yeah. All right. Another question for Rob Rowe. How difficult is it to remove the corals and sponges from their surface with their hold fast? Are some of them harder than others to remove? Some are harder than others, but they're, and some are more brittle and delicate. And um, so if you're, we generally, we just go for a hair trim of corals and sponges. Um, very rarely do we want to get it all the way down to the hold fast. Mm -hmm. Um, what, are, what are the small little ones, the cup corals? Oh, yeah. Those ones are really hard. The mushroom like, corals? Yeah, mushroom coral. No, uh, no the, corals. Cup, the, yeah, the cup coral. Both of which, I think. They're they're like scrape off. Oh, yeah, you're right. The, well, the cup corals have the hard thing to, that's difficult to get off, and the mushroom corals are like, you got to scrape up the soft body off. Yeah. yeah. We had a cup coral ride up on one of the big rocks last time we recovered. Seems to be that I think Steve was saying that's the easiest way to collect them. Really, is to yeah. Take the rock they're on, if you have the space. What's our winds doing? Same. Eighteen. Now, probably the most important question, burning question, has been unanswered. What are we eating on the ship? Ooh, not Reese's puffs. <laughs> <laughs> Tater tots. Oreos. <laughs> Lots of tater tots. We have a buffet style meal for each meal of the day. And there's a lot to choose from. I'm especially enjoying the fresh fruit and the salads, but also the tater tots. <laughs> Anybody else have a favorite? Pineapple. Pineapple. My favorite's probably the borscht, the hmm. soups that they make. Ooh, They're very good. What's hanging off of that? Crinoid? Crinoid. Yeah. There, can push uh, out can we, yeah, can we get a zoom? Because that's on someone's hit list, I think, but I gotta check. Interesting. That was a colored one. Lovely. Losing a, one of the limbs is half off. Really nice to see the feather stars in the when they're midwater, kind of moving each individual arm. I think that's pretty creepy. Nice coloration, that. Because we're sitting down now. Go ahead and come a little wide there, please. So did you guys? Uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't find it, so I think we're OK. Yeah, also, we don't have slurp capabilities really oh, right now. Yeah. We'll just launch it in there. and. There's a bathypathies next to it. Yeah, we are. Beauty. There. Are you gonna come up a little in the delta as I come under you? We have an answer to your question, Adam. Christmas in Denmark. Ooh. All right. Ready for this? Ready. 
brown sauce, caramel potatoes. Oh. I'm going to butcher this. Flick a stag, some pork from the oven, duck, and for dessert we eat rice a la mande with a lot of chopped almonds. You only get one whole almond, and if you get that in your dish, you get an additional gift. Ooh. Oh. oh. Caramel potatoes sounds intense. They sound delicious. Sounds fantastic. Is it caramelized yeah. or caramel? It says car caramel potatoes. All right. I'd try it. What's this, Rennie? I think it's another Chrysogorgia. I think it's Chrysogorgias. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it partially. Looks like the same kind as the last one. Yeah. I was saving that Chris Gorgeous thing. I was hoping we'd see another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Worked out. Get a tighter zoom. Sorry. As I drive towards it instead of. All right, there, please. Dave, what'd you call it when you're trying to uh, focus while things are moving around? Follow focus. Follow focus. Yeah, That's basically, you're, uh, I, at, at, with that one, I was zooming and uh, focusing at the same time while she was driving in or out at the same time. So you got multiple planes of focus uh, going on. Uh, and I'm doing it more to show off than anything. That looked awesome. It's it's fun actually. This is the fun part of the of the whole thing. Yeah, Dave, it's you're doing you're brilliant, brilliant focus finder. Doing great. Jake, can I come to one six zero there, please? Gonna come to one six zero. Thank you. We have a Hercules question. What is Herc's weight in water compared to dry weight? Weight in water is about, yeah, usually 30 pounds positive. So it means positively buoyant. Um, we have a large syntactic foam pack you can see in Argus camera. So it's the big yellow um, foam pack. And so that is allowing us to, um, well, rather, let me, let me take a step back. In, in air, it's over 5,000 pounds. Um, but in water, because we have a large syntactic foam pack on it, um, it's able to kind of counteract the weight of different metals and housings and all that, um, would otherwise make us very sinky, like Argus is, is very sinky. But this foam pack allows us to be about 30 pounds positively buoyant in water. And the, syn the syntactic foam is... It's heavy in air, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. that. So syntactic foam is uh, little hollow glass spheres yeah. embedded in epoxy. And uh, glass spheres, big ones, are used all the time for flotation in, in the ocean, but they also have the potential to fail kind of catastrophically. Mm -hmm. So when you make these spheres really small, even if they do fail... Uh, they don't cause a, a massive implosion. Yeah. 
How about what kind of power draw or wattage does Herc use on average? Power draw or wattage? Um, yeah, so right now we're sending down from the cabinet like 475. Um, but then that kind of gets a lot of our instruments on board are run off of like 110. Um, as in we can kind of reduce the, the 475 volts we send down um, into something more usable for instruments. Um, and then basically goes through a series of a transformer um, and then we kind of break it out in juncture boxes to get to whatever is the, kind of the power rating for uh, each instrument. So kind of a lot of a squeezing out different voltages, if you will. Is it mostly 110 for all the stuff? Or, or yeah, DC. the J boxes have, sorry. The J boxes we all put 110 into, and then from there, a lot of the instruments run off of like 24 or 12 volts. Okay, so 110 to the junction, and then 24, 12. Yeah, the 110's AC, and then the t 24, or is it 12 and 24, and then also 48 in uh, DC? 48, yeah, and with some of the Argus side, yeah. Like edge tech, it's 48. Yeah. So is there an electric field produced by Hercules? Ooh. Probably. Do I know it? No, I don't, but uh, probably. One thing that happens quite a lot when you're, like, towing a magnetometer is that it gets attacked by sharks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because it has an electric field or if it's just kind of vibrating in the water and looks like something tasty. Yeah. What is it that if you, there's a magnet shark repellent thing that swimmers can wear? You want to do a partial actually on this guy? It's lovely. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like swimmers wear a strong earth, rare earth magnet or something like this that. I don't know. It's supposed to deter sharks. Well, hopefully they don't tow a magnetometer behind them because <laughs> it seems to attract sharks. <laughs> seems like I, I've heard that about other towfish as well. So maybe it's it's just might just be the of, vibration of the yeah, cable. One of the big like Remus vehicles came back with a big like yeah shark bite in it. Bite mark out of it. Wow. That one I think is a. The shark cam, right? So it was being used to follow <laughs> yeah. a shark. <laughs> so it probably got a, a little frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and come wide there, please. We still have some 140 movement, so. Roger. That's what that, uh, that business is over there. Roger that. Are we underway in a move, or? We are. Oh, yeah, let's pause at the end of this one, because we're at you know, 2200, where we want to collect a rock. Sure. So one of our viewers has pointed me to a recipe for caramelized potatoes. Oh. Was it the same viewer or? I don't think so. Oh. so All right, we could crowdsource some <laughs> uh, good intel here. So basically you cook the potatoes, like boil them, 
I'm going to start taking notes. One second. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you getting this? <laughs> and you make a you make the caramel sauce in the bottom of your pan, sugar, water, don't stir it. And then you, and butter, and you, you toss potatoes in there and just coat them. So it's just caramel on potatoes then. Yeah. Interesting. In Costa Rica, that's how, it's my favorite way to eat the plantains. Mm. Oops, there you guys. So back to ocean yeah, question. Right there. Does, min does the mineral composition of the sediment affect what organisms you would find there? Hmm. I think the answer to that is probably yes, that uh, particular the carbon content of the sediments might influence what, what can live there. And if you had some sediment that was more muddy or more sandy, it might, uh, might influence what lives there. But a lot of the sediment in the deep sea, at least at a gross level, is uh, fairly similar. So I think that bigger control is kind of the biogeography of how animals are able to move around so you find regional differences in, in what lives in the sediment. All right, let's ask the listeners, viewers, what would be a good soundtrack to <laughs> go with this video? <laughs> the Hype Train soundtrack. What's it going to be? <laughs> oh, yeah, every, every day a different song. Is that the thought here? Make a mixtape. Oh, go ahead and push on in there a bit fun. these days. It lost its keys. Somewhere right around here. <laughs> Sorry for the jo some jostle there. And come a little wide, please. Actually, I should go anyway. Okay, full wide, please. All right, we have a few suggestions already. Wow. You ready for this? Yes. yes. Uh, Don't Stop Believing by Journey. Aw. That's a good choice. It's a classic. Lord of the Rings soundtrack. I'm into okay. that. I could get behind that. <laughs> uh, one of our viewers is watching a video of the International Space Station at the same time, and they have ambient music on, so that would be perfect for us. Ambient? Might get a little sleepy in here. Yeah, I might pop. <laughs> <laughs> They're watching the space station at the same time. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. Way up in the air, way down under the water. Now the true really question cool. is, which one do they like more? Yeah. Mm. I think the answer is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Space station. There's no sea cucumbers. <laughs> There's no sea cucumbers up there. There's space cucumbers. That is a long <laughs> guy. And the Mario underwater theme. Oh, good choice. 
Look how tall this guy is. I'm up uh, at yeah. three meters altitude. That's a nine foot long per. Well, maybe you subtract a few. Say eight foot tall. Wow. Very cool. Reach for the stars, Chris Gorgia. <laughs> And when we hit that big coral garden we know is just waiting for us, welcome to the jungle. Oh. oh. Nice. That would keep us going for the it's last It's probably at the summit, right? <laughs> Final countdown. Mm. That's for watch shift changeovers, isn't that? <laughs> Life on Mars. If you were always asking what kind of fish that was, did we get an idea on that? Uh, pretty sure it was a diplocanthopoma. And yes, Steve is up. Adam's like, I just have to know basalt. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, basalt is the simplest rock out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Walteria sponge. We haven't seen that in a bit. Oh, yeah. We got a second. on the rock behind it too. I think there's one of those like super shiny patches back there too. Yeah, is that just a uh, sheen? Looks like it, yeah. Hopefully when we zoom in we can get a better look at it. Go ahead and push on in there a bit there, Dave. Yellow submarine has a few votes. Oh yeah. All right. Come a little wide. All right, go ahead and push that in again, please. That is very shiny behind it, isn't it? Yeah. Have we seen those, this sponge yet on this leg? I think we did on the last dive, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. I'm just, I think it's Walteria, but I yeah. could be wrong. All right, you want to come partial wide there and then... Rennie, do you know the name of the yellow thing to the right? Where that thing? Or there's a one that's um, even farther over? It's, it's out of screen oh, now, wide, please. so when we see it, you can... Oh, yeah. uh, yep, now it's there. I can't tell what it is from this far away. Okay. Nice. Go ahead and push on in there quick. Up. Oh, it's not that one there. Oh. Oh, just kidding. Okay. Okay, get the... Pull away, please. That. Oh, yeah. Mm. Sorry, guys. No worries. I'm also going to have to go pretty soon, but... Okay. Snap, zoom it. No. Where is it again? It's right there. To the right of the lasers. Oh, I see. Go ahead and push on in there, please. A little far away for you guys, but... 
very difficult to make out anything. Uh, path I, think of it, I think it's a black coral. I don't know if it's a path of pathies, though. Pathy, pathy. Because it doesn't, the branching looks different, for, at least from this vantage. Hmm. But it looks like a black coral. Okay. Go away, please. Steve's okay. probably typing in right now. Typing furiously away. <laughs> I don't see any left. You got a Coming up. Uh, confirmation from the shore on the Walteria. Nice. We have a question about whether the way the lava solidifies makes it easier or difficult for things like the sponges or corals to attach to? I think it makes it easy, um, but not necessarily because how uh, the way it solidifies, but just because it's solid. So a lot of them like to attach to a hard surface and you know, for miles around, this is the hardest place, you know, that's up the, the if you go down to the base of this and go out in any direction, you're going to find a whole lot of soft sediment. Can I keep coming up there, Jake? Back to We'll check back. Um, okay, so the ship has come to a stop. Argus probably has a little bit of swing towards it, maybe 20 meters or so. We and can do uh, so now there's no rocks. Uh, that's <laughs> fine. We can do another 100 meter move and sample at the end of that. We're still at 2240. Okay. But it's cool. All these <laughs> sediment patches were. Not what I expected. There may be some loose stuff up here. Bridge enough. Step 100 meters bearing 160. Thank you. There is a bit of a current now, which is pushing us to the east. So the current's coming from the west? Yeah. This is with no with no stick. Interesting. So not crazy amount, but still noticeable. really hard to, s to say what the prevailing currents are from any one place because they get all twisted up around the seamount. Yeah, and then it's like not only like the different places on the seamount, but the different depths. Mm -hmm. 
I know that sometimes when we were coming up, you could see Argus, the way that it laid back in different places. And as far as time goes, Emma was expedition leader on the last cruise, was talking to us a lot about internal waves. I've heard that mentioned. Yeah. And that they still like can change through time and they can actually go pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there are long periods so you can dive on the same spot in one day and there could be a high current and then the next day you dive and there's no current. Yeah. Go ahead and do a partial there, please, Dave. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense as far as much current change this deep. That's great, yeah. thank you. Interesting, when these things die, they become sediment traps. Yeah. Very neat. A little wide, please. <laughs> so we don't have the sedimentation rate, and we don't know when the sponge died. But if we did <laughs> know either, we could know the other one. <laughs> That's true. We had a question about what a sponge is. It is a filter feeding animal. Another viewer wanted to know what we were looking for. We were looking for a rock to sample, correct, on our transect? Yeah, we got we got to cruise along a little bit more. We're looking for to sample a rock at a specific depth. Uh, we want them kind of evenly spaced up the side of this seamount. As we're cruising along, looking for sort of animals or colonizing the seamount. Some like long period of rippling in the Argus camp. Yeah.
Is that the Mela Terrace? I think so. I think it's the same one. The coral, or do you guys see the sponge? Oh, the coral. What's the sponge you're looking at? Rem Remula Gorgia? Ramula Gorgia, which turns out is still a Chrysogorgia. Or is this different? Seems like this is the dominant species, at least on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Transect of the seamount. Or is this different? Sorry, I was not listening to the SPL. <laughs> Probably talking over the top of someone. Got him pushing in there, but <laughs> No, you had good we, timing. Really? That's yeah, we were just responding to what you were saying. That's interesting. Is this? <laughs> yeah, this looks like this still the same one. Yeah, it seems some are like sparsely branched and some are. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Seems like all the polyps are facing right, which I think is west, yeah, or east. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Are they flexible enough to be blown in a direction, or do they aim one way? I don't know, and they seem—they seem like they're grow this particular species is all in w on one side of the branch, whereas the bamboo corals are okay. on either sides of the branch. Yeah. Mm. All right, go wide there, please, Dave. I have a few good sponge questions coming in and I believe we have a marine biologist